if you're watching this video, you probably decide to go down the UI UX path or thinking about it, right? So in this video, I'm going to walk you through what I think are the best UX courses to take. Why are they? Or just in general, what you can look out for. Let's roll the intro. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. This video is sponsored by... No, this is actually not sponsored by anything. What I meant to say was, this video was inspired by the YouTube user McGee. I think that's how you say it, right? There are three G's, so you stretch the G sound, McGee. Since I did two videos on UI UX, give or take, at Georgia Tech and Art Center, it makes sense to answer that question now. What are the best UX design courses to take? I'm here to share four UX design courses if you're thinking of becoming a UX designer. And I think these are the must-haves. You know what? Let's dive right in. Class number one, Psych 3750, User Interface and design. This is one of the courses that I took personally at Georgia Tech when I was doing my computer science minor. I highly recommend this class because it examined all the history, the development of interaction design in a really, really detailed way. It went through the whole process of how you should be approaching UI, mainly UX projects, and go through the different phases of design. You need to do initial research, to interview with the users to gather their needs and then you start the exploration and then you move on to prototyping developing something that you can test with users and a whole bunch of different research methods for you to validate your hypothesis your design see what works and what doesn't like what i mentioned in the other video you have semi instruction interview surveys you have questionnaires you have liquor scale one-way mirror user testing session you have eye tracking moderated research it will get you from knowing nothing to have a solid understanding of what ux design is and how to do a ux design project lots of great and fundamental readings that you have to have to have to know and understand in the field or in the area of interaction design by the end of the course you should get two things one is you will understand the evolution of interaction design and you can rationalize why things look and work the way they are like why do we use a window click model or why do we use a touch screen right how that evolved over time and second is if you were to approach a new ux project you know how to do it to do the initial research to get you started and how to evaluate the design choices that you made and then improve upon it to make it more usable make it more user friendly very basic very fundamental must must have class number two ID3220, Design Methods. Again, this is another class that I took at Georgia Tech, but this is part of the industrial design program. I include this one reason being this is a really good class just in the field of design. And second is because it could compensate some of the things that it did not cover in the user interface design and evaluation class. And as for this class, it emphasized a lot on the design process than anything else. This is a really fundamental concept that you have to understand just in the field of design. So fundamental that it can be still applicable to many different types of design, whether you are in entertainment or you're in transportation or in industrial design, they should all work because Design process is basically the same. And this class, let me put this up front. You really, really, really have to understand it well. Because if you don't, you're probably not going too far in design. I can tell you that. So some of the things that I remember from this class was that we watched the, the ideal, 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 ideal. You know, the famous, well-known, world-class design agency, ideal. They did a shopping cart redesign project a long time ago. And then that video basically is like five, 10 minutes or 20 minutes, just captured the development process, how they keep iterating it, finding what their users needs are, and then have a final version that works super well. That's like the kind of the golden standard of what the class is referencing, which leads to what are important in this class, like need finding very important. Whatever design you have, you have a problem to solve, right? So there's a need, from a user side, so you need to fulfill. So the need will stay the same. Each design or product that we can buy from the shop or from anywhere is a solution to the need or the solution to the problem. The need slash problem remain the same. There could be many different solutions. If the need is 
I need to reach the item on the top shelf. I'm not tall enough. Well, the need is the same, but there could be different solutions. Solution one, it could be a ladder. You know, it's a ladder, you climb on it, you grab the item from a shelf. It could be a shelf at the bottom or some sort of thing you can stab on. Another solution is you can develop a pulley system to pull yourself up so you can grab item from the top shelf, right? There's so many different solutions that could be infinite solutions, but the need is the same. So find that need, identify the need, focus on the need, not the solution. That's what that point is about. Next is empathy. I emphasize this so many times in many of my old video. Check it out up there. Design has two parts, right? Empathy, be empathetic and be iterative. Empathy, understand from somebody's perspective. If I'm designing for you, I need to understand how you think, how you act, because you will be the person using it, not me, even though we are both humans, right? And the third most important thing, iterations. The design process is not linear. Let me say that again, it's not linear. It's very cyclical, it goes through different ways and just keep looping. Sometimes you even go into an infinite loop mode and then until in the end, you have a good solution. The design process is iterative, it's cyclical, it's not linear. So when you're doing a design project, if you have not gone through at least three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different versions of your design, then you're not iterating. You're missing out one of the most important pieces of the puzzle. So just to recap, by the end of this course, you should understand design in a very fundamental and visceral way. So you understand need finding, you understand empathy, and iteration as part of the design process. Class number three will be my Parsons Summer Intensive Study. It was a five week summer program. So this class is a very straightforward graphic design course that focuses on craft, the fundamental, the visual of graphic design, the aesthetic and the beauty, how to lay things out cleanly in a tidy, organized way, easy to consume, easy to read. So by the end of this course, you should understand all those design principles, graphic design principles, especially really well. And you don't memorize the theory. You need to like understand it deep down. It's like second nature, like topography, alignment, composition, color use, blah, 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 blah. At some point in summer school, I just have that click moment. I was like, oh, I got it, I got it. I personally cannot tell you when you're gonna have that click moment. But what I can tell you is that if you feel like you're creating some random design with no good reason to back yourself up, or the more you work on a project, the more confused or lost that you get, you probably need to spend more time on your projects to get to that click moment. Class number four, it will be my invention studio class. Then I literally raise my hand, hey, can I do this project instead of that one? But technically, this can be any design course because the whole point for this one is you can do a project from the beginning to the end, literally end to end. And the beginning means you completely start with nothing, zero, zilch. That you need to interview users, find their needs, problem, and then you can move on to the next phase of the design process. You IDA, generate concepts, prototype it, test it with ideas. You might go back to research, and then this IDA, prototype, test, right? All the cynical loops that we talked about for one of the other classes. And then the end, and of course, as a student project, you're not gonna take it to production. Well, if you do, that would be amazing. Trust me, if you can do it, launch it to the app store, you're ahead of everybody else. But most of the time, you're not shipping it. So the end, in this case, is to pretend you have a real product ready, whether it's an app or it's a physical product, and then you do the fancy rendering, do the marketing ready material advertisement to basically frame your project, frame your product, present it nicely, elegantly. If you did a app design, let me bring this example up again. Apple.com, look at the iPhone page. Imagine Apple does not have a product ready. They can still present their concept in the same way, right? They can lay out their product in different ways, show different UI, different UI animations, different write-up, maybe a little bit of interactivity within the website. That's what you want to put in your portfolio, a really well-polished presentation of your design that has been gone through many iterations, you being very empathetic and finding the need, identifying the problem, 
solving a problem. And let me push yourself a little more. Do more than one project from the beginning to the end. So you get more experience on working a project from end to end and get a feel for what that development process is like because that's what you'll be doing if you have a UX design internship or a UX design full-time job. Once you have gone through that once, twice, three times, 10 times, you will find this become second nature. You don't have to think about which thing to do next. Everything is automated. Once everything is automated, you just have to get your mind in the right place and then start from need finding. And then without you noticing, you are gonna go through all the process in the right way. And that is a good sign. Optional class to take on demand, not necessary, but highly recommended. After you aced, mastered all those four classes, this is what you can do or you can take. Find whatever your interest is. There must be something other than generic design process, UX design that you're interested in. For me, let's say it's prototyping. Then I would take some prototyping classes from different schools. It doesn't have to be in the College of Design. It could be in computer science. It could be in maybe even engineering. Get good at it, specialize it. That would become my niche. And for me, working in Silicon Valley for not too long, actually, I still have to say prototyping and motion design are two of my strengths. They gave me some competitive advantage. Just say application, if I apply to this place versus another candidate, I have those skills that they don't because I know the process and I can go deep into a few areas. That's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful and insightful, please go ahead and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more UX design videos like this, also consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content on our own. Have fun following your passion and keep your eyes on the future. See you in the next video. Cheers.